Fahrenheit TV. Fahrenheit TV is a live monthly variety show that showcases people's greatness through narratives and artistic expression. We're back this summer to bring you more live, sizzling talk and entertainment to uplift your soul. Tune into our live episodes here on BNN TV or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us on social media to keep up with all our latest news. We hope that you'll tune in. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Fahrenheit TV. I'm your host and producer, Farrah June, and I'm so excited to be with you because today is my solo show. So it's just me as your extraordinary guest and host and producer. It's November and it's been such an amazing month full of blessings. I hope that you're in good spirits and that you're looking forward to the holidays and looking forward to seeing more family and friends and, you know, all the great things that are coming up. So for my solo show, I wanted to talk to you about my epic birthday trip to Thailand. So on October 25th is my birthday and I took for my 29th year I wanted to celebrate it in a big way and so I decided to go on a solo trip all the way to Thailand. Oh my gosh like the best trip of my life and it's hard for me to say that because I've had the blessing to study abroad in Senegal um, but going to Thailand was like the best birthday I've ever had. It is such a welcoming country that the culture is beautiful, the food is delicious, the art is amazing, the architecture. I mean, I could just go on and on, but I spent 10 beautiful days there and it was the best 10 days, like some of the best 10 days of my life. And I really wanted to share with you guys some of like my highlights of, of being there. And one of them was um, obviously eating. So Thai cuisine, you know, known in the West is really delicious. I mean, it's really known to be spicy, to be full of flavor. And for a person like me who has a lot of allergies, so I'm allergic to, to shellfish, peanuts, I'm lactose intolerant, allergic to bananas. I mean, it could be a little overwhelming going anywhere, especially to a different country to eat. But I was so fortunate that when I went to Thailand, I never got sick, God is good. And I ate really delicious food. And one of my uh, like best experiences was actually taking a cooking class at the Siamese Cookery House, um, located in Bangkok in Thailand. And it was such a fun experience. It was a three hour cooking class where we learned how to make four main dishes. And um, my instructor was so down to earth, so funny. And it was like an adventure in itself getting there. So before I, um, share with you some of the recipes. Um, I wanted to tell you how I got there. So it was the second day of me being in Bangkok. Um, it was already a crazy trip because I missed my flight to Bangkok, but I ended up in China and met some incredible people and the people were good there. And then I finally got to Thailand. And then on the second day after coming back from the floating market, I decided to go to a, you know, a solo journey of myself and um, go to a cooking class. And so I took the train all the way to get to the cooking class. And the trains in Thailand are so clean and so well like organized, like the cleanest um, train station I've ever seen. And I've been to train stations obviously here in Boston and New York and DC and Thailand, you know, we should look after them. The way they set up everything, it's so like organized and clean and the people are very friendly and it's so cheap. It only cost me like, I don't know, 15 cents to, you know, to ride like four or five stops to, to meet my cooking instructor. Okay, so current update. I took the train for the first time internationally and now I'm gonna go meet some people to take a Thai cooking class. So I'm really excited. Hopefully I'm in the right place, but it seemed like I followed the signs pretty well. So I should be good. Wish me luck. Met me at the station and when I got there it was like I felt like I was really really in Bangkok because it's such a busy city like the hotel I was staying in was like you know gave me a glimpse of Bangkok but like actually meeting him at that stop it was like you saw the city there's a lot of cars a lot of people there's motorcycles everywhere even the motorcycles like go on the sidewalk so it's kind of like wow there's a lot a lot going on but it's really fun and so I met him and we walked all the way to the cooking um the, to the place, to the cooking school. Sorry, I'm like jumbling everything. We walked all the way to the cooking school and on our way there, you see, I mean, a lot of people, you see a lot of uh, like restaurants, a lot of spa places, a lot of like massage places you could get. And we saw some food too. So originally with this cooking class, which I really love and I would recommend that anybody that goes to Thailand and Bangkok 
goes to the Siamese Cookery House because they're so organized and so friendly. And what they do is if you're able to make it to the cooking class in the morning, you get to go shopping with the ingredient for the ingredients with them. I didn't get to do that because I went to the floating market as part of my tour guide earlier in the day. But um, my cooking instructor was so nice to still show me what they grew in their garden right at the cookery house. So they had um, lemongrass, they had mint, they had uh, basil, they had um, other vegetables there. He was also telling me that tomatoes is still like a new thing in uh, t um, Thai cooking. It's not really popular and it became more popular when like big businesses like McDonald's and KFC, you know, came in because they had some of that Western influence with like ketchup and stuff. So you might see tomatoes in a few dishes, but it's really not um, popular. But anyways, they had that in their garden at the Siamese Cookery House. And um, it was really dope because it was only just me and him. So it, it was supposed to be, it was three of us in the cooking class, but the other two people who were supposed to meet were running late and they were newlyweds. They were so nice eventually when they got there, but it was like a good thing for me because I got to have that one-on-one -on -one with him. So he really told me a lot about like Thai culture, about his background, how he like, you know, was like, he used to um, do competitive cooking shows and stuff. And I was like, this is so dope. Like, oh, I love meeting people like this. And I love that he was like so down to earth and just so friendly and just like, I felt like I knew him already, you know what I mean? So it was just a very chill vibe. And then um, we still were doing like cooking stuff. So he was showing me how to make um, mango coconut rice, how to make sticky rice. Um, he was showing me like, you know, all the different um, herbs and how to make like um, curry from scratch. And then eventually when the newlyweds joined, we um, started cooking all the dishes together. So it was an amazing experience. And I thank them so much for making one day, one, that one that one day, amazing and terrific because I was I was really jet lagged during my whole trip in Thailand but it was such a blessing that I could I could get enough sleep after but anyways talking about all that great stuff I really wanted to um show you one of the uh the um the recipes that I enjoyed eating while I was in Thailand so this is not a recipe I learned to cook at the Thai the Siamese cookery house but they gave me this awesome I'll show it to you. They gave you, well, it's kind of, it kind of got wet, but they gave me this awesome cooking, um, cooking book, recipe book. And so I decided, you know what, today, why not make, you know, something off of the, cook, uh, of the cooking book? And I'm going to make with you green curry chicken, which is a very popular dish um, in Thailand. It's really delicious. It's like sweet, a little spicy. It's green, my favorite color. And it tastes really delicious. So why don't we get started? Cooking in the kitchen, making something hot and fresh for you. Cooking in the kitchen, making something delicious for you. Cooking in the kitchen, very high kitchen. Cooking in the kitchen, making something delicious for you. Crap, that night, 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 that All right, so first, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on my pot to just get it a little warm. I'm just gonna put it on low, very low. And then in the meantime, I was just gonna start cu um, cutting up the vegetables. So for this dish, um, it's really popular to use like eggplants. Um, and so you could add also add other vegetables that you like, but I'm gonna add eggplants. I'm gonna add a little bit of red bed bell pepper and a few onions just because you know I think it'll make the dish really incredible. I also got um, found some Thai um, red chili peppers which is awesome. It's not something you have to put in the dish but if you want a little extra kick you could. So I'm just gonna add I'm gonna you know cut up a little bit of these vegetables while our pan gets a little warm and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue. So yeah right now I'm just gonna start doing the onions and for the onions um, for this dish I don't want to make them too thin. I'm just gonna like cut them in like, you know, good, good chunks. So that way they look good. But yeah, I mean like the cooking class in general was just like, I never been to a, a cooking class that long, three hours, and it was such a good deal. Like it was a really good deal to just like take that cooking class and have that one-on-one -on -one experience. And especially because like, I feel like if you learn about food through any culture, I feel like you really learn about the people and what they like and you know what they what they connect with. Um, so for me, like taking a cooking class, I hope 
wherever I land, again, wherever I go, that um, I'll continue to take cooking classes because I love to cook. I love to eat more than I cook, but um, <laughs> I think it's really dope just to, you know, learn about other cultures and things that we have, you know, similar, like what, like they eat um, basil. I use basil in, in, my, in my cooking at home. Um, eggplants, all of that good stuff. So it's really cool to see the, the similarities and the differences and just their techniques. So yeah, I just cut the um, tomato, I meant the <laughs> bell peppers and the onions in little chunks. And then now I'm going to do the eggplant. And you know, usually I don't really have eggplant that much. In Haitian cooking, um, we normally eat a lot of vegetables in like soup. So that's what usually when I have I will probably eat the most vegetables is like when I'm eating soup because I love soup, especially Haitian soups. Um, and then sometimes I eat like, you know, um, Parmesan, eggplant, if it's lactose free. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I'm doing the same thing, just cutting up in chunks. I want to make sure that it's like a, a, um, a delicious bite and it's not overwhelming where you're feeling like you're chewing forever. Um, so yeah, I'm just cutting them up in little chunks. And I'm making enough for like two people. But, you know, anybody in my studio, my crew, my amazing crew might want some. Don't worry, I'll make you some more. But for now, since we're, you know, experimented, let's just make this little portion. And then um, I'm just going to take one chili pepper because, you know, one thing that I found fa fascinating while I was there is that <laughs> normally when they uh, give you Thai food, they always give you a warning, especially to, like, Americans and, like, um, you know, tourists. is like, it's really hot. But for me, I like, I personally like hot food. Um, so whenever they told me that and I'll be like, oh, I like spicy food, they'd be, like, so surprised. Like, are you sure? Are you ready for this spice? And I'm like, listen. Sir, ma'am, I got this. Like, don't worry. You could put the spices up. As long as, like, it's not too spicy where you can't taste, you know, the flavor of the food, then I think it's fine. Um, I'm just going to cut up two because I, I don't know if, like, the crew will be like, oh, my gosh, this is so spicy. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but, yeah, Thai cooking is really known to have, like, a lot of spices. But it makes sense because it's so hot in Thailand that you would want to have a little spice to make, you know, breathe and get some good fresh air in because it's so humid out there. So I feel like it's a, it's a good, it's good to have spicy to, you know, make you sweat a little bit. So, anyways, we got all our vegetables um, cut up. Um, and now I, uh, this is, like, still warming up. And I'm just going to add a little bit of oil. Well, I forgot my oil, but it's okay because I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, fish sauce just to make the pan a little like moist before we add um, all of our other ingredients. And we will be using fish sauce anyways for this dish, so it will be fine. So I'm just going to spread it around. Hopefully the alarms don't go off in this studio. <laughs> um, and just make it, you know, nice and moist. Okay, so. First step is, if you have oil, which is the first step is to put the oil in the pan, and you want to only just put like one um, tablespoon of oil just to get the pan, you know, moist, right? After you do that, um, I have some coconut cream in here that I brought, coconut cream, and I um, got some chicken breast that I already chopped up and seasoned. Uh, it's, in Haitian cooking especially, we love to season our, our meat and clean it. So it's already been cleaned with lemon and um, it's seasoned with just salt and pepper, you know, something simple because um, we still want to make it Thai inspired. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one, um, three tablespoons of the coconut cream in here, right? You could already like um, hear it kind of bubbling. Three tablespoons of the coconut cream. And after we do that, cover that up. Three tablespoons of the coconut cream. After we do that, we want to put, um, oh no, we want to put our coconut, our um, curry paste first before we put the chicken. So the curry paste, I was going to show you how to make curry paste originally because I learned how to make red curry paste when I was um, at the, uh, the, the cooking class. But like some of the ingredients I couldn't find here in Boston. Like, you know, you really do need, it's really important that you actually use green, um, Thai green peppers because it, it's, it has a different taste than the red peppers. And I couldn't find the, the green ones. I could only find the red ones. But, you know, whatever. It'll still work out. 
So, um, but I, what I was going to say is that I found the paste already made, um, you know, and so shout out to this company for already making the paste for people like me who can't find it here um, in the city. If anybody knows where to find it in the city, like the like red, like green chili peppers, please send me a DM because um, I would love to try to make this paste on my own since I learned how to make the red one while I was back there. But anyways, you want to take one tablespoon of the um, green curry paste and you want to put it right in there. Put it right in there. Mix it with the coconut cream. I love that this dish uses so much coconut because I love coconut, especially being someone who's lactose intolerant. Coconut is my friend. I love coconut anything. But anyways, you want to just mix it in there. And this is spicy. This um co this green curry paste it is spicy and it's kind of influenced a little bit about by Indian cooking because they do have like. Um, people from India and Thailand. So it's really cool to see like how, you know, two cultures could mix and create something really delicious. But anyways, you want to mix that in with the coconut cream, right? And then the last, after you do that step, you want to add your chicken. And this, the chicken that I have is about, um, one second. It's about like, two cups of chicken that I basically took chicken breast, I cut them up into little chunks, and you wanna put those two cups in with the green curry paste and the coconut cream. And you're going to saute these until um, the oil leaves. So it's gonna take some time. I don't wanna put the fire too hot. Even though it was like kind of funny because when I was in the cooking class, um, they put the fire like really high. Like it was like, flames where it was awesome because everything like cooked pretty fast and it was still delicious and cooked correctly but because we're in a studio and we're a nonprofit, I don't want to make like the alarms go off or anything so I'm gonna keep my uh, my heat at a medium just in case but anyways yeah two cups two cups of the um of the chicken so we're just gonna let that saute in there and in the meantime I will while that is like cooking and sauteing, I'll tell you a few more amazing things that I got to do while I was in Thailand. So for the first day, I already told you I missed my flight going to Bangkok, which was like inevitable that, that was going to happen anyways because apparently Air China is always late. I didn't know this was my first time flying ever, like ever to Asia and it was the longest flight I ever took. Um, so I didn't know that they're always late. So we landed like, um, our, to get to catch our flight to Bangkok, it, we were supposed to be there at 7:45, and we landed at 7:30. And when you <laughs> land in Beijing, I mean, there's no way that you would have like f in 15 minutes you would be able to go through, you know, um, to to um, international like through customs and all that, and get your and through security in order to catch your flight. Like I was definitely going to miss it, but I was still trying to stay optimistic because it was um, the eve of my birthday, and I didn't want to spend my last year of my 28th year being stressed, um, and you know, beginning my 29th year, you know, being stressed. So I kind of was just going with the flow. So, anyways, as soon as I got off the plane, there was um, some like staff from Air China, and they're like, "Are you fair?" And I was like, "Yes." They're like, "All right, let's go." And I'm running, I'm running for my life. Like the Beijing airport is the biggest airport I've ever seen in my life. It's huge. So I'm running, I'm running, I'm going through security. They're like, check, they check your, they check everything in Beijing. They're like extreme over there. They do not play, which is a good thing. But if you're trying to rush, you're like, ah. So they're like checking my bag. They checked it like a good two times. They're checking my laptop, all that stuff. And it's crazy because while I'm doing that, there's like, 10 other people who are also doing the same thing because some of them were part, were, were part of my um, tour guide, which, you know, this is my first time meeting them. And then some people are also just trying to catch that same flight. So we're all kind of going crazy. So it's almost like a reality show. So I get through customs. This is this is cooking nice. Oh, it smells so good. Anyways, I get through I get through security, get through customs, and then I'm running. And you know those little, like, um, those little cars they have at the airport to, like, you know, drive you from one place to another place? 
the guy sees me running for my life, and instead of coming to pick me up, he just come like, he's like, come on, you got this. And I'm like, I'm running with like my big backpack and like my pillow, and I'm just like, gosh, I feel like I'm running a marathon. I finally make it to the car, and then when I make it to his little cruiser thing, he's just like cruising to get to the, you know, just to get to the gate. And I'm thinking, you know, since he's cruising, he's taking his time, that we got plenty of time to make it because he, he doesn't seem worried at all. So I'm just kind of like, oh, maybe we didn't, we didn't miss this flight. No, we've been missed this flight. By the time we get there, he's like, oh, well, I guess you missed it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess we did. So anyways, we missed the flight. And then at, when we get there, there was like him and like another car pulled up and all these people got off and they're like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? We missed this flight. I got this, I got that, blah, blah, blah. People are going crazy. And I'm just like silent, just looking like, wow, this is nuts. And I'm just like, well, I mean, there's nothing I can do. You know, I already missed it. Let's just find plan B. But people were going crazy behind me. And so we walked to the Air China, like, you know, information desk and they were like, you know what? You could catch a flight tomorrow, actually, which would be my actual birthday. Um, it was a Friday. They're like, you could catch a, a flight tomorrow and um, you can stay overnight in Beijing hotel for free. And um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll put you on another flight tomorrow. And I was like, that's cool with me. I mean, especially because like, that's such a blessing. Like you missed this flight, but at least they're taking care of you to put you in a hotel so you could, you know, take a shower, you know, sleep for a little bit late, you know, be somewhere safe. You don't have to like sleep in the airport. And I was like so grateful for that. And plus, I never thought that I would be staying in Beijing longer than, you know, like an hour for a layover. So to me, that was like, I, that's cool with me. It was a nice surprise. And so we get to the hotel and I end up meeting all these other 10 people that also <laughs> missed their flight. Some of them who were part of my tour guide, which was cool. I was the only person traveling solo. So it was really dope to like meet all these other people and get to know them. And I was like, this is like such a fun, it's like a movie, it's like a reality show. Um, so the chicken is cooking pretty good. Um, you don't want to get it to be overcooked. That's another thing with like uh, breast, ch uh, chicken breasts is that they can overcook. So you just want to get them where they're like, you know, like uh, fork soft, like a little soft, not too, not too overcooked, you know? So anyway, it's getting there. So let me tell you more. So yeah, I get to, I get to the hotel. We have a good meal. We got a meal as well. Um, and then um, I was like, and the bed was so funny because they gave, gave me a, a room with two beds and the bed was like way too small for my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're like so small over there. But I was still grateful just to have a place to lay my head, especially on the eve of my birthday to the beginning of my birthday. I woke up at 3 a.m. on my birthday, ready to catch the flight back to, be to um, Bangkok, and it went well. Um, so, okay. So this is going good. I'm gonna put up the heat a little bit more. It was on like low medium, so I'm just gonna put it onto medium so that way it could cook a little bit long, uh, faster. But it's looking really good. It, it, it smells really good, and you see the green. But, all right, so one thing I thought about is while that's cooking, we can, um, one thing I, I saw on a YouTube video, because a lot of people have different techniques of how to um, cook uh, the green curry, um, green, gr um, green curry chicken, um, but this is kind of how I learned while I was in the, um, the cooking class. But one thing I did learn from a great YouTuber is that in order, if you wanna make your curry a little bit more green, all you have to do is take some basil. So this is some fresh basil I got. Um, and you wanna just mix it with some coconut milk. So first I'm gonna just, gonna take, gonna take some basil, and I put the stems in there too. Don't be shy, you still, when it's all blended, it all tastes the same. So I'm just gonna take like, oh that's a lot. I'm gonna take like, mm, like three stems from here. And maybe, yeah, I'll do four. And I'm just gonna put it in this little blending thing and then we're gonna put coconut milk on top of it. I got some coconut milk. And we're gonna blend it together to give it a little bit more green. So while that's cooking, we will add this to this dish after. So anyways, so yeah, so we caught the flight to, um, to Thailand, but it wasn't with Air China this time. This time it was with Thai Airlines, which I liked a lot better 
because um, it was so colorful. Like the, so the people, like the, um, what do they call the airlines, the staff, like the women, they wear these like really elegant like outfits where it's like a nice little scarf and like it's silk and it's, they're all different colors like purple, blue, yellow, like really like, you know, soft and elegant. And I was like, wow, they look so pretty. Like, you know, it just made me feel like, mm, look at me. You know what I mean? Look at me in Thailand with all these fancy people. Um, so anyways, yeah, you want to add a little bit of coconut milk. Um, I wouldn't add that much. I would add like a little bit just to cover the bottom. Hmm. Yeah, like a, like a one-fourth of a cup. And um, you want to put, where is my cover? Yeah, you want to put this on. This is my little ninja blender. And then you just want to blend. So uh, let's see. Put this right here, and then you blend. And you want to blend it pretty well, like to have it, you know, um, have the basil chopped up pretty well, and you know, blend it all with the um, coconut. And this is gonna help our curry be a little bit more green, like the Grinch green, which I think would be nice. Green, 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 green. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna let that soak on here. And this painting is actually done by an incredible artist that I met um, at the floating market. So I want to give a big shout out to Mike. He was so nice and he does these amazing portraits, not only of these cute little elephants, but of people on the floating market, of different animals. And just a shout out to Mike. If you go to the floating market, one of those floating markets, which I'll put in the description of where exactly it's at, um, please visit Mike because he's an incredible artist and he deserves your support and the, you would want his artwork in your house. But anyway, so yeah, so we have our, our, t our basil mixed with our coconut, cream, um, coconut milk over here. And our chicken looks pretty good. It's cooked pretty good. So um, now what we want to do is we want to add our vegetables. So I'm going to add the eggplants that I cut up earlier. So eggplants. And then I'm going to add my red bell peppers and my onions. So I'm just going to put them all in there to cook. And you mix it all up, and it's gonna cook together. Woo, smells good. It smells really good. Because you don't want our chicken to be too overcooked. Um, so while that is cooking, and then we're also gonna add our seasoning. So for the seasonings, um, you wanna add one tablespoon of, of fish sauce. One tablespoon of fish sauce. Right? We also wanna add one table, one tablespoon of the tamarind sauce. I'm just gonna take, and this is kind of like a, it's basically like soy sauce, but this is also gluten free, which I think is pretty dope, which is nice, gluten free. One tablespoon of this sauce, right? And then you also want to add three tablespoons of ginger. So I got this little powdered ginger, so I'm just gonna put it in here. And I don't wanna like put too much ginger, um, but enough because the, the curry paste already has like some seasoning, so you don't need that much. You know, you could always alter it to fit your, your, your needs or your, your um, what you like. So I added like basically like maybe like two teaspoons. And then um, you also want to add some lime leaves and you also want to add the basil. I'm going to wait to the end to add the basil because if you add it now, it's going to get um, um, brown and dark. So you could do that last. But um, the lime leaves, I'm definitely going to add that. Let me just mix this up a little bit. It smells really good. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit and then what I'm gonna do is, you remember how we blended the, the basil with the coconut milk earlier? I'm gonna add that in now, so that way that gets mixed in. And it basically just makes your curry a lot greener. 
but you want to make it, you know, green because it is called green curry chicken. So why not make it green? Anyways, right? We add that in there, let that boil. And I'm gonna add the lime leaves. You could add the lime leaves now because they won't like get dark or anything. And it really gives it a nice citrusy kind of, you know, extra taste to it, which is gonna be delicious. I didn't even know that like lime leaves were a thing until I went to this cooking class. You only wanna um, add two of these, only two. It smells really good. But you like, as soon as I like smelled it, I was like, oh, I understand. Like you really could taste that flavor when you put it in there. So you're just gonna put that in there, let that mix, absorb the flavor. This is just cooking. I put it on a little bit medium high because it'll be fine by now. I'm not frying anything so things won't be popping at me. Um, and let that sink in. And then what I'm also gonna do lastly, before we add other stuff, is I'm gonna do one cup of just coconut milk. One cup of coconut milk. Wow, this is gonna be a lot. Hopefully I'll eat it. Hopefully the staff will all eat it. If it's good, <laughs> I think it will be. So yeah, and you just wanna mix that in there and just let it boil. And then as soon as you see like, you know, your vegetables start to, you know, become a little softer, then I would add the basil as the last step. But this already has chunks of basil because we blended it with the coconut milk earlier. So I think this is really good and it looks green. I'm gonna let it boil before I um, taste it a little bit for flavor, but it looks really good. Oh, you know what I'm also gonna do? I'm, I forgot is I'm gonna add a little bit of the red Thai red chili peppers just cause I want to give it a little bit of spice. Hopefully it won't be too, too hot. So yeah. So yeah, so you basically are like, you know, doing really good. Um, you could put, for this dish, you could either serve it with noodles or rice or jasmine rice. I made jasmine rice previously. So as soon as this cooks, we will add it with the jasmine rice. Um, but everything was good for now. So while this is cooking, um, yeah, so I got on the Thai Airlines, right? I'm on there, I love it because it's really colorful. The chairs were yellow, purple, and pink. I sat in a yellow chair, which I thought was fitting because I had a yellow outfit for my birthday, Hey, So I sat in the chair, right? And everything was going smooth. Like I was just watching some movies, you know, enjoying my life. I was like, oh, it's my birthday. Like this is such, it, re it really was a blessing because I've never been on a trip like this. And I've never been to Asia, I've always wanted to go, and especially Thailand, I've always wanted to go. So I just felt really blessed in the moment that I was safe, I was happy, I was just, you know, everything was just perfect. So we're on the flight, right? And you know how normally sometimes pilots will come on, they'd be like, oh, we're gonna experience a little bit of turbulence. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Normally when the pilot says we're gonna experience turbulence, I just get ready, because I'm like, thank you for warning me. Now my body will be, my mind, my body will, will be, you know, ready for any like, you know, ups and down the plane is going. So as soon as he said that, right, the plane started, you know, going up and down. I'm just calm because I'm chilling. I'm watching a movie. I'm chilling. Um, I have one person next to me. She's been sleeping the whole time. Um, so I'm chilling or whatever, just, you know, going. It starts going up and down. Next thing you know, this lady starts screaming out of her mind from the other side, like over, over there. She's like, oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Screaming and, you know, saying words in Thai. I don't know what she was saying, but she was screaming for her life. Everybody's like, calm down, calm down. Everything's going to be fine. I'm just kind of like, what? I just have my headphones on, like, what's going on? And then the girl next to me wakes up, and she's like, oh my gosh, go get help. And I'm like, go get help? Like, what am I supposed to do? There's nothing I can do. She's like, you have to help her. I'm like, it's like literally nothing I can do. The, um, the airline like staff is telling her, calm down, we're gonna be fine. And then one of the other airline staffs apparently got really sick up there. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this her first time flying? Like, how did she get sick? She's part of the staff. She's supposed to be used to this. Crazy, right? And this is literally, this is like a whole movie. So I'm just kind of like, wow. And then the girl next to me, she starts telling me about her life and she's from Vietnam. I, some of the things I didn't understand because she was going in and out. Like she's from like in Vietnamese and in English. And I was like, wow, girl, that's crazy. And then she started touching my hair. And I was like, man, you would have thought we were best friends the way she was like snuggling up on me and just like chilling. But you know, I was just going along with it, whatever. This is an experience. Um, and then, but anyways, the, 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 the moral of the story is that the flight was fine after those few terms. The lady calmed down. We made it. We touched down in Bangkok. Woohoo! And, um, 
our, our driver came to pick us up and everything went smoothly. And on my actual birthday, because I was so tired and that day we were actually supposed to um, meet our group to go see temples, but we missed it because, you know, we, we, we arrived late. Um, I just went and got the best massage of my life. It was, oh, it was glorious. And then I just kind of took the rest of the day to just kind of chill and just absorb everything and, you know, make sure that I'm well rested for the second day, which the second day, again, I went to the floating market, got this amazing artwork, and then I went to the cooking class. So that's like the first two days, well, first two days and a half of my trip to Thailand, but it was great. But anyways, this is smelling really good. It's coming to a nice boil. The eggplants are looking like they're getting a lot more cooked. Oh man, it, it tastes really good. So I'm just gonna give it a taste to see how we're doing so far. <laughs> okay, let's see. Got a different spoon to do this. Woo! -hoo! Wow, wow, wow. Mm, mm, mm. I feel like it needs a little bit more spice. Okay. I feel like it needs a little bit more spice, but I don't want to overdo it because I don't know if my staff is going to be like, fair, you're killing me. So I'm just going to keep it light. Um, but one thing I forgot to add, which I forgot to add, is they add sugar to this. Um, and you only want to do um, one tablespoon of sugar. And it's normally palm sugar. I couldn't find any palm sugar, so I'm just going to put regular white sugar, which will be fine still. Um, and it's about like two of these. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. It's gonna make it a little sweet. Honestly, I really do think it needs a little bit more spice, and I just feel like if I didn't add the spice, then it just wouldn't be Thai enough, you know what I mean? So I'm just really gonna um, take two more of these peppers, and I'm gonna cut them up to put them in there, just cause like, I feel like we want that hit of spice, you know what I mean? We wanna feel like we were like getting a, a Thai-inspired dish with the spice. But if you're not feeling the spice, you don't have to put more spices. You could always tone this down by adding like spinach or putting less of the green curry paste if you know you, spicy is not your thing, and it will still be delicious. Well, but me, I like to turn it up. I like to bring that heat, that Fahrenheit heat. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more spices. I just cut up two more of these, just because I feel like you know you need it. And another thing is, since this is already served with rice, like. The rice will tune down the, 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 um, the spiciness. So yeah, I think this is gonna be good. I put the sugar, I'm gonna see how it tastes, but it looks green enough, right? Like it's green, it has coconut, coconut cream, all these delicious veggies, chicken. And you don't have to use chicken for this dish. Like you could use other forms of protein. So you could put tofu, you could put shrimp, beef, whatever you like. Or if you're vegetarian, you don't have to put any any um, you know, meat in there. You could just you know, go with tofu or not and just do it all vegetables. Sometimes people um, put like, uh, I think I've seen like bean sprouts and other things in here. I just kind of kept it simple for this one dish, but oh my gosh, it smells so good. Uh, I hope it tastes even better. Um, so while that's going, I think I'm gonna add the basil now because it's safe to do so, it's boiling, everything's really cooked. It's just kind of just absorbing the flavors. And I'm just gonna take like, no, that's a lot. I'm just gonna take like two of these leaves, two leaves, and I'm just gonna put it in there. And it's not like, it's really just for it to observe more of the flavor. It's not something I, you would really necessarily put on the, um, the plate when you're serving someone. But you can put all this stuff in here. I think this would be like a really delicious dish to have for Thanksgiving. Normally this meal in Thailand, you, you share it with other people. You know, and you sit together and you share it with other people. At restaurants, um, you, you know, they, they, they could give it to you solo. But normally this is a meal that you share with like other people, or family, friends, that type of thing. But this was a dish I really enjoyed when I was in Thailand, just like getting it at a restaurant. And the food over there is so cheap to get like a full course meal. And obviously the meal is cooked with love. It's really delicious. And again, for a person that, like me that has so many allergies, I, I just was really grateful that I was able to eat and not get sick and, and be like beyond satisfied. My taste buds were like, yes, give me more. I really also enjoyed eating um, like soup. Soup is a big thing for me. I really like noodles and all that. So again, with this um, dish, you could put it over noodles if you like. Um, so while this is like basically, basically much pretty much done, I'm just gonna put it on a low, let it still simmer a little bit. And I'm just going to get out my rice 
and we could start, you know, serving a little bit to see how Miss Chef Fahrenheit did, you know, and see how I did. And um, my staff will let me <laughs> know how it tastes. But I got this amazing bowl at the floating market, which uh, one of the regrets I had was I wish I brought a lot more funds with me. But, you know, I'm an artist, so I don't have a lot. But what I did have, I was able to get a few cool gems. And I really like this bowl because it's made at, from a coconut. Um, and the design in there is one of my favorite memories of like being able to spend time with elephants there and the elephants are beautiful and yeah and I like the color so anyways um, this is the bowl and I'm just gonna put some rice in it so I already made um, some jasmine rice at home just cuz I didn't want to take up all your time for this segment and so I'm just gonna put some rice in here Ooh, 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 some jasmine rice, put it in the bowl. All right, I put about like, I think a cup's worth in there. You know, we're just trying it out. And normally this dish is like, it's served separately, so you wouldn't necessarily put, you know, the curry on top of this rice. Like when it's served to you, it would come separately and then you kind of do, your, you know, you mix it by yourself, which I think is, Really nice because I think that's how it should be served. But um, for the sake of uh, just saving, and you know, it's my show, I can, I can do that because I'm gonna eat it, so I'm gonna mix it anyway. So anyways, I'm just gonna take one nice um, scoop of this. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so I got some chicken. I'm gonna put it on the side. Chicken with some onions and some red bell peppers and eggplants. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of the sauce. Not a little bit, just, I lied. I'm gonna put a lot of the sauce. I don't wanna make it too wet, but you know, you still wanna get the, the flavor. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the basil just to give it some beauty. I think what I like about this dish is like it's colorful, you know? And there you go. So this is how it looks so far. It smells really good. And now is the time for me to try it out. So I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna cover this for now. Okay. All right. And I got some chopsticks. I'm not the best at using these, but I just kind of make it work, which a lot of people laughed at me when I was in Thailand, but they were like, I like that you try. And I was like, you know, that's all I could do. So anyways, I'm just gonna try this. I think it's gonna be really good. Okay, I got some chicken. I got a red bell pepper and some rice. I just kind of make them work for me. Mm, mm. You know, I don't even want to like brag, but this is good. Oh wow, it's really good. <clears throat> oh Jesus. You know, wow. And this is like my second time making this because I tried this at home and I was like, okay, this is the things I could learn from. And this is me just, you know, going back from the thing. But anyways, this is delicious. You should try it. Thai food is amazing. I just want to thank Thailand for being so kind to me, treating me so well. Um, Kap Kun Ka, which means thank you. And I hope you just enjoy this. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. I hope that you are spending it with people you love or surrounded by love. And join me for the next episode of Fahrenheit TV coming up to you next month. This is delicious. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Cooking in the kitchen, making something hot and fresh for you. Cooking in the kitchen, making something delicious for you. Cooking in the kitchen, Fahrenheit kitchen. Cooking in the kitchen, making something delicious for you. Crap. That night, that night, night that night, that that night, 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 that